This is absolutely insane just how many architectural tech startups there are and they are going to fundamentally change the industry of architecture and it's going to happen faster than a lot of architects realize. Now a lot of these tech companies are softwares that are going to support current workflows and programs and others are going to disrupt how architects practice. Now this is not to say that the architect will be replaced by any means. I will always have that as a necessary and fundamental uh, person in this process of getting a project built. However, these technologies will change how architects practice architecture and then also how consumers interact with designs and buildings and project delivery. Will these softwares be more democratizing and allow easier access to design and data to more people? Or will it facilitate an acceleration of profit schemes for developers to be more profitable and develop even worse projects? I don't know, but I think it's important to start to parse these technologies together. Okay, because this is Nate Studio Desk, we are going to do this pretty casually, just go through some of these tech companies and see what they're all about. All right, so first up we have these developer tools and here we have SpaceMaker. And this tool offers a number of services uh, for both uh, developers to do basic analysis and to see how many units would sit in a, a site, that sort of thing. Now, if you're not familiar with a tool like this, you know, typically an architect would spend months doing programming or pre-design Sometimes it's called master planning, sometimes it's called pre-design programming. And this is really defining what the scope of the project's going to be early on in the process. And this tool could potentially be used by developers to get fundraising or to test out design ideas on a site that they might purchase. There's a ton of use cases that a developer could use this for. Similar to that early site design, we have a product like TestFit, really just testing out feasibility. Next up, we have Digital Blue Foam, which kind of crosses that boundary between so this strictly kind of site developer tool and then maybe something an architect or designer could use. So it does do site analysis, but I think it's more geared towards design and some baseline, really basic analysis. And this is more of a I would say an active tool. So they have kind of these drawing tools that you can use early on in the design process. Okay, I also got a chance to test this, this tool out. And this one is now in that category of, it's a design tool, but it's going to get your project to its products sooner. So you can take a CAD model, you can upload it, and it's going to give you product information upfront and going to streamline that process between designing building something and then turning that into a, not just a set of construction documents but having those all those product integrations layer and layer is really interesting because it has a direct link inside revit which i think a lot of architects will appreciate and this is going to i think this tool has a lot of potential because it seems like they're kind of in, infusing data into your Revit model. And so anything from building services, surveys to FF&E, so products, or even BIM coordination punch lists would be this sidebar integration within Revit. So it's giving you kind of a lot of data to work with, this cloud data access within Revit directly. Now, hopefully Revit is a, around long enough, but I think even if Revit were to go away, this could be a web plugin that could plug into other design tools. So now we have Cove Tool. I actually work here, so definitely bias, but this is going to be primarily a analysis software that's also going to provide a lot of tools and resources and features alongside those environmental analysis. So at its basis, it's, it's a cost first energy building performance analysis tool. Uh, then alongside that, it has these various fun tools that you can take advantage of, whether it's the fa facade tool where you can test out louvers and design shading, uh, or and it also has a drawing tool built in with it. So we'll see some of these developments happening 
definitely a company to keep an eye out for. Okay, and then in this category of sourcing data, we have space, spatiometrics. A really interesting team came out of MIT, I think, um, and they're also looking at this early design phase as both occupancy studies, so let's learn more here. So this is like occupancy studies, and programming, and this is also going to be more in that early stage design. What I do like about spatiometrics so far is I, I, I like their graphics. I, I think uh, it's, it's interesting because it's like they offer some, I guess you could say, like advanced kind of technology. But I think having graphics at the end of an analysis that look nice is pretty important to architects that want to use this for a presentation. And that's another thing that Cove Tool also does really well. You get generated reports that you can just directly communicate to your clients. So really valuable. Definitely keep an eye out on this project. Next, next, next. Next up we have Neighbor, which is interesting because it's actually co-founded by Bjork Engels, a very famous and successful architect. And the idea here is to make home, own, home ownership more accessible. So it's unclear how exactly they're going to do this. They have this test prototype building in San Jose. Uh, they have ideas so far about modularity and this kind of changing the real estate system. So this kind of works as a real estate company in my eyes. It's a way to get people homes in a way that they could have more say in that design process and also make it more affordable. So we'll see how this actually plays out and the sort of integrations and tools that they start to develop, whether this would be an app that you would use and it would kind of streamline the process of home ownership. And the idea here is that the homeowner gets more say in a built project and streamlines the home buying experience. So here are some tools that really just assist architects more so. And this is Upcodes. They're doing a phenomenal job. I I hate to say it, but I started using them and it almost feels like cheating because you just type in uh, codes and it just makes reading and understanding codes so much easier. And this is where a lot of traditional architects will probably grunge because they're like, man, I, you gotta look at the book, the books. Um, but I do have to admit, like, oh my gosh, like it just makes it super simple, really helpful tool and resource. Okay, then we have a bound, which is pretty interesting. It's kind of like the idea of a smart home. It's like a meta smart home. It's going to take a series of all your smart devices and kind of make an overall smart device and kind of monitor all your systems and be able to really provide a real smart house. This doesn't necessarily just target homeowners. They do all sizes and scales. And so I'm curious which it would be more applicable to. I don't know if home homeowners right now need like a super intensive data dashboard for their home. Maybe some people really want that to integrate everything, but certainly for education, sports, entertainment, these larger projects to have a centralized data system that's taking into consideration all of these desperate robotics and systems and being able to get that into a platform that you can actually understand as a user and actually take actions with will be pretty cool. And, you know, something like this could provide like also like security management things. So like if a pipe bursts or something, this could maybe like alert you that it's happening. Or if there's an irregularity that happens in the building, you would get a notification. Okay, this is another one, Canoe Supply, design, purchase, and deploy your low carbon workplace. The first end-to-end -end platform for designing, procur procuring, and managing low carbon reconfiguration interiors. So this is gonna be more catered towards interiors and providing uh, products into uh, your workspace, but it's going to provide a uh, design platform that you can use where you're inputting specific items. Okay, then we have Arkle, which is 
it's in its early stage here. So it's going to be really interesting. This, I would say, is a direct competition. This is the first software, really, that I would say is a direct competition to a company like Revit. So right now, Revit is a desktop application, and this one is essentially going to be a web app, a, basically a Revit web app. Uh, and they call it a Figma for BIM. So those of you who know Figma, it's very intuitive, it's easy to use, and they're going to develop a tool like that except for a BIM software. So this is a direct competitor to companies like Revit and Archicad. Um, again, it's it's such an early stage in this, this tool. It will be interesting, just something to monitor and take a take a look at uh, as it kind of gets developed it's going to be hard to it's going to be hard to compete with Revit just because it has such a deep penetration into the market however Revit didn't exist however many years ago so again how fast these companies will come in and transform and what kind of adoption level will be really interesting will it be a case of adopting something like zoom or will it take longer and we'll just have to kind of monitor and take a look at then we have some interesting things here in terms of 3d building so this is a company that's doing 3d printed community uh, so i'm curious to kind of see this interaction between users and 3d printed spaces so it looks like they're developing a tool that can 3D print a house, and which means that they're kind of developing a module that can 3D print a house. <laughs> and what's kind of crazy about this is when we're starting to think about those products where you're designing your own house, and then you take a tool like this like 3D printer, which is almost like a CNC machine, but additive printing it will be really interesting to see how this sort of end-to-end -end system from someone wanting a house to getting a house built will work when you start putting together some of these pieces from owners being able to design their own house to analyze those for environmental factors for space factors and then go to 3d printing that's it's very interesting and to see you know how much are these going to be this suite of web apps that are out there that people are going to use in conjunction and are there going to be any of these that start to integrate all these systems together again usually when you try to do too many things you don't do anything well uh, and so the idea of a lot of these apps that we've taken a look at they're really focusing on one or two things that they want to just do really well, and then they can expand out. Uh, then we have a company like another building oriented company, which is this Ori, which is kind of like, I think of like an Ikea for a house. It's going to provide modular systems that you can customize and input into your apartment suite. I, I hate to say this, they, these guys must be located in New York because it just, oh, Brooklyn, I, I did not know that before, I swear, because uh, this really seems like it's catered towards apartment living, which is super cool because you could have these adaptive and flexible modular spaces and, and do some really cool stuff. So again, an opportunity to customize and here, this would be an opportunity to rethink how we build products and how those can integrate in our homes. Okay, we have another kind of modular building system type of tool here called Wahoo. I really like their name, Wahoo or Woho. Uh, and it's going to have a suite of systems that they can deliver, follow radically new construction, so you can have suite. So another ploy or another attempt at modular building buckminster fuller might be happy i don't know okay then we also have here monograph which is going to be a project management software so 
This one I get tons of, see a lot of press about. They have really awesome graphics. I am curious how they sort of stack up to Asana and Monday.com. This is much more catered towards architects and project management. And Asana doesn't have this level of detail. And I think it might be a situation where teams might use both Monday.com and a monograph. And hopefully they're starting to uh, incorporate those sort of monday.com type of features within. I'm seeing project management, the planner, resource management, those types of tools. Um, so it does seem like they're incorporating those. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting tool. And I think architects will use this more and more. Uh, there's uh, are a couple other softwares out there like Dell Tech and other kind of, let's just say like project management, but also uh, HR type of programs that kind of try to do both. This one's, again, started off hyper-focused on project management and we'll see how it starts to go into HR. Can you create invoicing and reports and that kind of stuff? Awesome. So that's all I have for you today. Let me know if you want to see any one of these softwares in more detail to understand them more. Again, thanks for joining and taking a look at these kind of interesting tech startups. Uh, soon we're going to start something where we're going to start reviewing programs and software. And so we'll be reviewing some of these uh, in a little bit more depth. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the other side. Have a good day.